Truth is, I thought it mattered. I thought that money mattered. But does it bollocks? Not compared to how people matter. Welcome, Mention and other fine folks to the Sunday Dispatch of the Black Letter, where we contemplate thoughts worth thinking as we try to make sense of the upside down, topsy-turvy world we live in, seeking greener pastures on the other side, hopefully coming out healthier, wealthier, and wiser. And in order to do that, we need to make sense of the nonsensical. So let's get to it. Today, we're going to look at some good news and some uh, mixed news as well, uh, primarily regarding the economy. Looks like there might be some improvements. We'll see how long that lasts. But first up at Yahoo Finance, ex-New York Fed chief Dudley says economic outlook is deteriorating. The U.S. economy faces slow going with no additional fiscal support likely for several months, said former New York Fed president William Dudley. The outlook for the economy is deteriorating. The most likely scenario is that we continue to have a recovery with some downside risk of a double-dip recession. The Federal Reserve can clearly do more, Dudley said. The real question is how much of an impact would it actually have on the economy, and we figure at this point not very much, because the Fed's already accomplished most of what monetary policy can do to support the economy. And of course, this echoes something similar to what we heard uh, yesterday from, I think, a different um, ex-Fed governor. So clearly, uh, they're not seeming to think that they have much ammo left that can really move the needle much. And now, of course, it's on to the government and fiscal policy in order to add more stimulus, which is probably coming at some point, uh, unlikely uh, before the election, and most likely unlikely before the end of the year, in my opinion. So we have to wait until the new year, which means it's going to affect the fourth quarter that we're in. And I'm not sure that Christmas is going to be as good as uh, perhaps one would hope uh, especially with additional stimulus. So we'll keep an eye out on that. I think this fourth quarter here is going to be uh, challenging. And I say that because as we go to CNBC, the US GDP booms at 33.1% rate in quarter three, better than expected. And this is uh, good news, obviously. Um, however, they were expecting about a 32% estimate, as it says here. Nevertheless, I think this is going to be short-lived as uh, things continue to deteriorate and i think most com companies are hoping at least a lot of retail industries are probably hoping to survive through christmas and that will bring them uh, into the uh, black but i don't think that's going to happen for a lot of them and we're going to continue to see huge downward pressure in the markets in the economy uh, in the forthcoming months uh, in quarter four and quarter one of next year especially but of course i've been wrong so far so hopefully i'll continue to be wrong because nobody wants to be in the situation we're in. However, things are quite challenging. And here you can see how the uh, U US economic boom busts uh, look. This is basically straight up and straight down. So these numbers look very sketchy to me. Uh, we'll have to see if they're revised down or not, or up even. But you can see we've never had a quarter three bounce this quickly uh, since World War II and the roaring 20s, really. Of course, we've never actually shut down the economy for a uh, um, portion of a quarter, so perhaps that explains that. And now people have been maybe really antsy to get out into the malls and do some shopping, as I think it uh, mentions here as well, right? Quarter three growth came amid a resurgence in consumer activity, which comprises about two-thirds of GDP. Though most of the country remained in a cautious reopening, shoppers began returning to stores, and the bar and restaurant industry entered the first tepid phase of resuming business despite restrictions on capacity. And I'm just not sure this is going to continue at that same uh, breakneck pace, so we'll have to see. Uh, I think if we get a positive increase, uh, next quarter will be um, a, a positive, certainly. Um, and of course, it won't be a change from, the, see, this has changed from the prior quarter. So this was obviously a 33% increase from the prior quarter, which was down 31%. So I think this is um, misleading because it seems to think that um, the economy actually grew. But if it's only 33% increase from this prior quarter, then I don't think we're even in the, uh, in the black, really. It just means that things improved from such a downward trend. So we're probably still nowhere near GDP where we were um, last quarter, or perhaps even last year. So I think there's a bit misleading. It looks like things are really robustly improving, and I don't think that's exactly what this is telling us only that it's increased 33% from the depth here. Anyway, I think next quarter, obviously we won't be able to increase from this uh, boost. I think it's going to be negative again. I don't see how uh, we get a greater increase in GDP from 
the third quarter here, which was really phenomenal. After everything had come to an end, people had been out robustly. I think now things are just going to uh, deteriorate slowly uh, further. We'll probably have smaller um, negative growth around this level here, maybe some of these levels perhaps, perhaps as bad as minus 10%. More good news from CNBC, U.S. weekly jobless claims total 751,000 versus 778,000 expected. And uh, of course, I didn't think we would have this low. I thought it would be over 800,000. And as you know, I'm still expecting 1 million uh, new jobless claims before the end of the year. Perhaps that might never happen. So uh, this could be uh, good news. However, these numbers are still quite large and we don't want to uh, discount that fact either. You can see how we've been since the uh, coronavirus. Never have we been this high. I don't think um, since probably the great financial crisis might have had something, I don't even think it was that high. I think it might have been the 600, uh, 600,000. So uh, this is just astonishingly high numbers and I'm not sure whether the recovery is uh, going to uh, be that quick or swift. Continuous jobless claims, which include those receiving unemployment benefits for at least two straight weeks dropped to 700, excuse me, dropped by 709,000 to 7.75 million during the week of October 17th. Um, so that's also a positive spin. But of course, that doesn't give you the real indication into the devastation that the economy has been. So quite challenging times. Before we get to the stock market, I just want to have a reminder of the uh, today. this week is a big earnings season. We've seen the market uh, be quite uh, volatile. So let's take a look uh, as well as who's reporting today and tomorrow. So here we have the uh, most anticipated earnings releases from October 26th. And today is Thursday, so uh, before they open, we've had Shopify, Nokia, Moderna, Spotify, Overstock, Kraft Heinz, Global Payments, Ab InBev, and Yum Brands. After the close, got some uh, big tech stocks, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Twitter, Alphabet, Starbucks, Digital Turbine. So big, uh, big um, week, as you can see, and also quite a big day today, especially. So we'll see uh, how this seems to move the market. We've had a couple of, I think, a few red days or down days in a row. So there's probably a bounce at some point, uh, maybe even a modest one, perhaps today. Even let's take a look at the markets now. All right, and here you can see, yeah, we're up slightly. Dow Jones is flat. NASDAQ up uh, half, a, half a percent. Um, S&P 500 up a fifth of a percent. So these are modest uh, numbers. We'll see it uh, might not hold a green day. It depends on what else comes out today, I suppose. Russell 2000 dying down by 0.1%. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, it could be a flat day, a red day, a slightly green day, depending on this early start. But let's uh, see what else happens. Gold still doing uh, much of nothing, uh, 1860, and sort of still consolidating around that low level, perhaps uh, forming a bit of a wedge or a triangular pattern here. We'll see what happens with that. Silver probably similarly. And here you see silver has dropped a little bit down to uh, 22. Um, I'm expecting at some point maybe it'll get down to 17, 18 here. We'll see about that. All right, on to the cryptocurrency market. Okay, under pressure again, 1.7% uh, decrease, 395 billion market cap. So it's down below 400 billion again, 6,002 uh, coins for your purchasing pleasure. I would stay away. It's keeping increasing like uh, cockroaches, I guess. Um, you can see Bitcoin is on the downtrend and struggling, well not struggling, but sort of getting near the 13,000 mark. I have to keep an eye on that. Ethereum now uh, down below 400 as well. And a lot of um, selling pressure and XRP, these top 10 coins here, uh, specifically Polkadot down 8% uh, quite substantially. What else do we have? 5.8% uh, on Monero, the privacy coin. Stella, of course, uh, flirting with 7 cents again now. And uh, that's a uh, uni swap down here and uh, minus 5% at 257. So who knows this might uh, go down to nothing. And uh, that's fine too. All right, on to the online oracle for today's most pressing question. So you know, we've had a bit of uh, pressure on the stock market lately. The last few days it's been down. And I imagine this week it'll be down unless we have some huge rallies today and tomorrow. Uh, so I've been thinking I'll be turning the corner here as the market's starting to correct again. So I thought that'd be a good question for our trusty sidekick, the 8-Ball Economist. Is the market starting to correct? I'm not certain. I think it's happening slowly. It says yes. So that's quite a clear answer. Of course, it was wrong yesterday about the unemployment claims, new jobless claims. But there you have it. It's probably just as accurate 
as any of the other analysts. So I have it. I hope uh, you enjoy that. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate you. Hope you're having a wonderful day. It's almost the end of the week. Enjoy the weekend. Stay safe and healthy out there. And remember, above all else, dumb Spiro Sparrow.